All right, so this is part of the uh, horizontal stabilizer I've been working on. And uh, you can see I've got the doublers are mostly clecoed down. I'm still working on the, the bottom. That's actually the bottom, even though it's the top in this uh, view. It's actually the bottom of the spar. This is the rear spar. The previous video where I talked about rivet layouts, I had mentioned uh, incorrectly that this section here uh, had a 40 millimeter pitch where the rear bracket goes between these rib stations here to here uh, and here to here. I had incorrectly stated that this had an, an exact 40 millimeter pitch in between these two rivet stations. Well, I actually marked that out and started to drill the first couple of holes through that uh, position and quickly realized that something did not look right uh, when I got to that point. The, these two rivets were going to be too far apart and interfere here. So what I'm going to do to fix that, because I would have to completely remake the spar in order to avoid this hole, uh, what I will be able to do uh, is actually where this lines up on the center line, depending on where this lines up on the center line, I can probably fit a rivet head underneath there and close up that hole. Uh, possibly not, but uh, the second hole that I drilled here is uh, is fine. I can use that where it's at, but the essentially the, the bracket here, it's going to be mounted to the other side of this, but it's going to be right kind of on the edge of where that is. So I can still probably drill that and set a rivet in that location. Uh, it's not going to draw down super tight uh, or perfectly, but it's not going to be a structural rivet at that point. So uh, what I've done is actually added a rivet location here and here, and then there's a total of 21 rivets that go into this this area. Uh, when you when you lay out the rivet pattern for this, you've got your uh, hinge blocks and reinforcing angle here, and then there's a total of 21 A5 rivets that are just on the the mounting plate here. So what I'll end up doing is getting this lined up perfectly, match drilling the holes where they need to go, and then wherever this accidental hole and this accidental hole lined up, I'll just match drill them to this, set a rivet in that location, and then continue on with the 21 rivet pattern here. And what the reason I ended up uh, accidentally doing that is because I didn't look closely enough at the horizontal stabilizer rear bracket um, rivet layout. Now the front brackets are actually two separate brackets, and so those are quite easy. They just end up on a, in a specific spot uh, measured against the center line, and you just put five A5 rivets in them, and that's a simple, simple thing to do there. But, uh, you know, yeah, as we get over into here, the rivet pattern is more substantial. So you have to look where these, these things line up specifically where, where they line up. And you don't, I, I mentioned before, you don't want to end up having a rivet pass through say where you know the edge of this would be and you can't get a rivet into it you don't you don't want to end up having a rivet in the wrong spot or having one interfere so that'll be something when i drill the front spar i'll need to make sure that my you know 40 pitch rivets that go all across the doublers don't actually interfere with these brackets and uh, and the rib station. So I forgot to take those two bra that bracket into account when I started drilling the rear spar. Uh, shouldn't be a problem to compensate for it, uh, one millimeter one way or the other. You know, if I have to squeeze it in there, and then I can still drill the rivet rivet pattern. But again, when your plan's building, none of these holes are laid out for you in specific locations when you're just given a pitch. So you've got rib stations with you know their locations and you've got brackets where their locations go and then you just have a simple rivet pitch in between those locations so make sure when you're laying out your rivets that you do take into account all the structures all the pieces and parts that have to bolt to that structure in order to finish it because you don't want to end up having popping a rivet into an area where you know the head itself is going to interfere or you can't drill all the way through to make that um, rivet location good. So uh, the other option is just to prime that and leave that an open hole. Uh, it's not really going to you know, cause any structural problems, I don't think, or corrosion issues. It's all going to be primed over anyway. And so I should have good corrosion resistance if I just leave that a hole, which is what I might end up having to do. But we will see once the, uh, once the bracket's in place and once I have, you know, see how much room I have to work with. So all right, so continuing with the rear spar on the horizontal stabilizer, you can see that after I did the initial drilling uh, for the doublers, I have flipped it uh, over to drill from the backside. 
So what I'll be doing is putting my, these are where my rib station lines are and my tip rib and or brackets and hinge plate locations are. I'm going to be drilling from this direction, so I had to flip the Clecos around and then uh, put a block of wood, just a chunk of 2x4, underneath the part that I'm going to be drilling. So the, the Cleco has a little, the little clamping part of the Cleco sticks down to about here, so that would interfere with the wood block here. Um, so I just butt it up against to where these Clecos are, and then I can drill straight through the spar and the doubler and here just in the center where it's the spar alone into this block of wood which will help minimize burrs and also provide a solid surface so that I'm not bowing out any metal as I push down on it. So <clears throat> down here when I get to this rib station what I'll actually end up doing is pulling these Clecos out and centering the block uh, right next to the closest group over here and doing the same thing. Now the spar itself with the doublers it gets match drilled with for A4 rivets all the way down the length except for where you end up with brackets that attach with A5 rivets, rivets. And then the ribs themselves also attach with A4 rivets. But because I can clamp, perfectly clamp the doublers into place on the back side, I match drilled those with the very first hole. I didn't bother with an A3 hole and then re-drill it with a uh, match drilled hole. There was no reason to do that because there's nothing to line up. These things, uh, they clamp into position exactly and there's nothing to line up. However, over here on the rib, uh, rib stations, uh, you have to make sure that your rib is perfectly in alignment, uh, you know, square to the table and everything else. And so what you do is you drill pilot holes here and they essentially become sight holes for the line that you draw down the center of your rib flange and what you do is you line up the the center line with those pilot holes that you drilled clamp the rib into place making sure that it's square uh, to the spar you know square and vertical and straight and how you exactly want it you then clamp it in place and you match drill through those a3 pilot holes on the spar into the rib flange with a4 holes and that's how you match drill these so that is why I did not drill these locations and why, except for the uh, oops I had right here, why I did not drill the uh, mounting bracket holes because now I need to match drill this to the spar once I get it all lined up properly. So uh, what I'll end up doing is pilot holing. I'm not sure exactly actually how I'm going to do this just yet, So, uh, but once I get it clamped and lined up into place, uh, then I'll be able to determine that. So uh, more to come on that, but for now we have the uh, rib locations to pilot and then I'm, what I'm going to do once those are done, uh, I'll probably work on the bracket and then I'll move to the front spar and then I can bring the front spar into the ribs and do the same thing with that. So more to come. Okay, so that uh, oops hole I had, I wanted to show you here if we can get enough light in there. That hole is right here okay and I lucked out in that I can actually get an A4 rivet in there underneath where this curves up uh, without compromising this structure so I can seal that with an A4 rivet and then this will sit over top of that A4 rivet just where that where the uh, where the curved surface is right there the rivet will actually sit right under that curved surface without buckling the structure so I got very lucky and I need to pay closer attention, but that's going to fit right under there with an A4 rivet and I'll be uh, just fine. Uh, so I'm very lucky, very happy with that because it doesn't, it means I don't have any problems. But again, it stresses the importance of making sure that you understand where your rivets have to go and uh, what types of surfaces, if you have a variable distance for those rivets, you know, if you're just laying out a pitch, you can move that those rivets to accommodate these structures without running into something because I, I, I wouldn't want to have to uh, have a rivet underneath this that I'd have to countersink this to fit over top of the rivet or anything like that. So uh, very happy that I, I lucked out with that uh, uh, situation. <laughs> and from here on out, I have to be very, very careful uh, what, uh, where I place rivets and where I drill things. Again, in a kit, you don't have to worry about things like this uh, as much. But uh, plans building, uh, you locate everything on your own and have to be very careful. So 
really carefully study the layout of things, uh, where your rivet locations have to go, and where you end up uh, placing structures and things like that. It's critical, absolutely critical, that you do this correctly. All right, folks, in the continuing saga of the horizontal stabilizer build, I want to bring up a couple other points. The bracket here in the back, I actually am going to have to remake along with the uh, hinge bracket because even though my spar is pretty much exactly the right height according to the drawings and this part is exactly the right height according to the drawings there's 30 millimeters that need to stick out from the bottom and if you do that you end up about four or five millimeters shy right here so you don't have enough room to rivet to the doubler underneath uh, where the spar and the doubler meet and you, you get a couple of millimeters of leeway, but I'm kind of at a loss on this one. At 135 millimeters long, it's just too short to have 30 millimeters sticking out the bottom. It, it could be because of where the reference lines uh, for the overall measurement on the spar come for uh, around the curved surface, but best I can tell, my spar is perfect. And best I can tell, that part is perfect. So. Having said that, I'm about four or five millimeters short to get the 30 millimeter protrusion at the bottom of the bracket. So the only way I can see to combat that is to remake this part and make it longer. I'm not real thrilled about that because I've already got the spar drilled. I have to exactly match all the holes. And fortunately, I have not matched drill these to the A5 size they require. They're currently an A4 size, so I can use them as pilot holes. And then if they are slightly off, the match drilling will, with an A5 bit, will take care of that problem. But really just completely at a loss as to why uh, that's an issue. And another thing that I did wrong is you can see that this has a slight angle to it. When I was looking at the part of the drawing facing the, facing me, so this basically this view except inverted, uh, I had uh, kind of eyeballed to where this was located and, and just kind of missed the boat on that. So that was my fault. So I can still use this bracket that I remade but I have to make this part and this part and then completely rematch drill them to the spar beneath. So uh, that's one point. And the other issue, if you look at the spar assembly, so this is the uh, skeleton assembly drawing. So this is the upside down version of what I showed you with the part here. And it appeared to me that uh, a certain line was to be followed uh, that was, um, coincident with the uh, through hole on the uh, on the hinge here. Uh, however, uh, when you go over here, this bracket is perfectly in line on the bend line with the hole here. So what I had done is actually uh, angled this up so that the uh, essentially this bracket was centered in between centered in in there so I had a slight angle up which structurally I don't think is an issue whatsoever but since I have to remake this bracket and the other one anyway I might as well do it right and make sure it matches the drawings here and that was simply because I failed to examine this closely enough to that. Now the other issue is if you look at the spar assemblies you can see here that the rear spar when it attaches to the tip rib it, uh, the rear spar is full length okay but up here uh, they've trimmed it just short of the tip rib and you use a piece of L to secure the sides of the tip rib to the front spar. So you can see there, this piece right here that protrudes out is basically the vertical surface of that, that spar. And then this is the flange that's been trimmed, trimmed away. Um, and then you add the L here to attach the rib in that spot. But there's no place in the assembly drawings that it talks about cutting that notch. And when looking at the uh, layout for the spar itself, there's nothing in this front spar that tells you to do that. But there's no way to put the full spar inside the tip rib <clears throat> because the flange is actually running run into it. So um, when you have the, the ribs laid out in the proper orientation on the table with the spars assembled to the uh, center ribs or the rear ribs, uh, the only way to do it, the only way to get this to fit, is to trim, notch this corner off, and then uh, use the L to do it, which is why they do it in the drawings. But I'm, I'm just kind of surprised why that little notch is not included in the drawing for the spar. 
it's a simple, it'd be a simple thing to add it, but I can't find anywhere in the assembly drawings that talks about that. So what I'll have to do, because I've already bent this, is I've got to drill a relief hole at a slight angle right at the corner of where that's going to be, and then I can trim it out with snips on either corner, and I've got to do that on both ends. And that's what I'm going to do now so that I can actually assemble this darn thing. But uh, we will uh, be back with more after that. Thanks.